Well, hello everyone. Five viewers, six viewers, sorry. Well, today is something new which I never did before. Good morning, Tobias. I hope you're all having a good morning or whatever time is it in your country. Hello, Souris du Coton. Uh, well, yeah. So, gonna try art review. I tried it uh, before on one of the public uh, live streams. Hi, Sophie. Uh, and uh, gonna review the artworks. So, I, I just wanted to say uh, something, but I forgot. Because uh, I'm a bit nervous, and uh, each time I'm going live stream, I'm a bit nervous, even though I held so many live streams. Uh, however, I'm still sleepy a bit and uh, didn't sleep good actually and uh, I might be a bit slow. Uh, yeah, but I prefer to run live streams in the morning because in the evening it's even worse. It's uh, I I'm unable to think soberly. Uh, yeah, what did I want to mention? Just wanted to say something about uh, the format of this uh, art reviews, it's not something like, I, I'm not a teacher and I never was and I never, how to say, even tried to uh, teach someone and uh, even some basic drawing, so I, I, I don't have, um, how to say, like any background, any uh, program which will allow me to uh, educate some someone else and um, and I never been interested into this. So with this, uh, art reviews are mostly for entertainment at the first place, and uh, so we all having a good time. I'm, I will be very very glad if it will be helpful. But uh, please just don't rely on my opinion, because uh, there are ver huge variety of different styles, and uh, people see the world differently, and. Uh, I'm just sharing my point of view, so it's it's not how to make your artwork better, it's just how I would make it better, right? Uh, so please don't accept it as a critics, don't accept it uh, like you did something wrong or uh, uh, you having a lack of some particular skills, it's really just uh, my point of view. Well, yeah. I got some errors again in my YouTube studio. Just let me know guys in the comments if there will be some problems like lagging, the problems with the sound or <clears throat> the picture will be lagging. Just let me know please. And yeah, okay, so uh, today I plan probably to run it for, I don't know, something about like two hours maybe. We will see, maybe it will be very fast, maybe not, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> and we got uh, six artists to review today. And I will just go in the order uh, like I was receiving the mails, right? So uh, the first artist is Victor Ferraz. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing names not correctly. I will type them also, <clears throat> so you can see it on the screen. And by the way, I thought about uh, an option for the future, if someone wants to stay uh, anonymous, uh, uh, shall be mentioned in the mail. So I will notify uh, this thing next time. Okay. Voila. Let's see. Well, Victor is very talented artist. Uh, it's hard to. Uh, I, I presume it will be hard to review his works because uh, uh, because he got very nice skills already and. Uh, 
very sort of unique uh, vision. Uh, he sent me two works. This is the second one. I don't know if you can see it clearly. I will zoom in a bit. You can also check his uh, artworks on ArtStation if you type his name. Or maybe Victor can, if he is watching, he can provide the link to the chat. Yeah. And this is the first artwork. So we can see some very, very emotional, I would say, and uh, very interesting, mysterious uh, place with interesting characters. I don't know if it has something to do with orphanage or uh, topics like this, but it's absolutely very, very, very emotional. Hello, I presume it's uh, Gemi, Jamie, I don't know how to say it correctly. And Igor, hello. Well, yeah. Okay, so. I will start with what I like here, and uh, I already said that it's very emotional, and I think that's one of the major tasks which artists need to achieve in his or her artworks. Uh, uh, f first time I looked, uh, I really had some emotional response. Uh, it's really... Uh, I don't know even how to describe it. It's confusing. It's uh, kids, uh, abandoned kids, uh, sad faces. Uh, some of them are, I don't know, disabled or even dead, and uh, it's very gloomy. And from the other hand, you can see all these uh, balloons. I, I, pre I presume it's like the helium uh, guys. I don't know who they are. Maybe they are robots. I will double check if there were just two artworks. I don't remember exactly. I will quickly check. Yeah, I, I got saved uh, just two of them. Well, yeah. So, uh, and uh, I would probably say that the colors are very, very interesting, and uh, I see already some specific. It's it's not offensive. It's some specific Brazilian style. Victor is from Brasilia, and uh, Brazil, sorry, and uh, uh, I can see the very specific style which I see uh, in artworks of uh, artists in Brazil. So. Uh, it's not that it's uh, all the same. It's just uh, I I'm, pre I'm I, I can recognize it already when I see guys from Brazil on art station or on Instagram. I almost all the time can identify it without looking into profile. So yeah, very nice colors, uh, very nice mood. I like the uh, small details like this like the fingers, very sketchy, but uh, it looks complete. It looks complete, there is no need to push it further and uh, make some photorealistic render. It's already making its uh, goal, the whole picture. Uh, so, again, since I'm already uh, always starting to process the visual information through composition, doesn't matter if I'm a viewer or if I'm going to draw something, so I will start with composition here as well. Uh, about directions. So I'm always thinking, when I'm thinking composition, I think about directions, vectors. So as an artist, I want to manipulate uh, as much as possible the viewer's eyes and the viewer's understanding and reading of the visual. So, uh, so I'm thinking about directions right now. I will just point to what we got here, or what I see here. First of all, my eyes tend to go, in general, like this. 
in this direction. I would say like this. In this direction. So I'm op opening the image, it goes from here to the bottom, the right bottom of the image. Uh, it's not like my eyes is not traveling uh, on the horizontal line. It's not traveling in this direction, even though the horizontal line is very well established. And I absolutely not paying that much attention to these guys here on the left. And uh, it's not bad, it's just it, it might be the part of the plan to not draw too much attention to something. Uh, so if we gonna say that this was a direction of the eye movement and readings of all the all the space uh, inside the image, uh, then I don't like the thing that it ends up on the very bottom here. So like all this space here is actually yes, it's it's like a scenery for this point here, but still it might be, I think, done a bit more interesting, in interesting way. Uh, also, why this line is starting here, it's because of these characters, how they placed. We can see that the center, there are actually two centers of composition in this image. One is this, which is not that obvious, and one is this, which is more obvious and more vivid. But since this part, this center, is very down there, down right, and this one is a bit upper, and plus this massive thing on the background, which breaks the horizontal thing, it makes the eye, I don't know, jump into some particular area here, for me. And then it immediately goes to the actual center of composition here. So, f to me, to my eye, it's a bit unbalanced. It's of course might be the uh, the solution might be in cropping the image, might be in uh, adding some space on the bottom, but I don't want to uh, play with the croppings and changing the image uh, ratios. Uh, we can try to solve some puzzles inside the existing image. Let's create the group, so we... Come on. Uh, uh, Pelling can create the group. Are you kidding me? Jump in. Yep. Jump in. Alright. Yes, Jimmy is... Uh, Jimmy, how to pronounce your name? I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your nickname. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. He's saying in the chat that it's great visual storytelling. I absolutely agree. It's a very, very. I said in the very beginning, very emotional, very nicely done. Uh, well, okay. So what I'm gonna try to do here is to. Well, yeah, so first of all, quickly to resume, we got center here, we got more, the bigger center here. I will do it like this. I hope it's well visible on the screen. I will try to resize it maybe to make it a bit smaller so it fits better. Yeah, maybe like this. Uh, well, okay. So we got two centers here. What I would like to do, to try, is to keep the same uh, vector direction from the left to the right, but make it more horizontal. So instead of this, instead of this, we will get to something more horizontal, like more like this. 
so finally this point will get to the to the actual second center if I, if I'm say if I'm clear with this Jimmy you said it right yeah okay so that's cool Oop. so of course the first very simple manipulations we're gonna just divide the layers quickly the body boo is here the glorious moderator of interpelling forum Hi Hi buddy boo Up I want to say putain Okay, so I got the problems with my uh, pen. For some reason it's making double click very fast and I can't select properly. I'm gonna uh, quickly, if it's possible, select everything on the separate layer so we can move them. Adjust them separately. With this image, by the way, it's a good example of the <coughs> work which can be adjusted without uh, uh, minor steps uh, back. Like you don't need to redraw everything and start from scratch. I believe this image can be adjusted uh, right away like it is and uh, yeah. So I'm going to maybe take all the back as well. I don't know how it feels like, by the way, uh, when someone is uh, starting to mess with your artwork. <laughs> I never been into this shoe, so let me know, guys, if it's if you feel like your teeth are scr scr scratching, stretching. I don't know if you are sitting angry there and like what the fuck he's doing with my work. Uh, Okay, now we got the back separated, perfect. And I would like to also make the this group of um, children here to be on separate layer as well. Alright, got this layer, got this. So now we can move everything. Sorry, I'm going to vape time to time. It's the first thing to do in the morning. So for this horizontal ratio, I would prefer the composition which will support this horizontal ratio. In this case, if we are talking about this uh, wide angle uh, landscape, uh, Jimmy, I can't speak for Victor, but I would uh, be honored to have my 
work edited by great Pelling. Well, great, yes. Of course, very great. So, if the first center of composition, which is the smaller one, represents uh, by the characters, which are standing, and they are, we can assume them to be vertical. And the second center is somewhat to be horizontal, it's where the boys are sitting. Is like this, it's not a bad compo. But still, all this space, uh, like the empty space, which of course introduce us to some uh, information anyway, like landscape, it's showing us what the place is it, and uh, what's going on there, the state of weather, things like this. I would try to, anyway, to try to move it here. And absolutely not being confused that it goes into the middle of the picture. It's not a problem. The eye, it's, it's like the comfortable path for the eye. It reads very fast the everything what's going on when it's in the middle of the picture. So, very roughly, if I will try to put it a bit upper. Just to, to bring this to the to the center on the left, on the same level, like this, and we will try to fix the the back a bit. I think this music pretty much uh, goes within this with this uh, image. If you can hear the music, guys, on the back. Somehow like this. And I'm sorry, but I have to draw a bit on your picture. It's all right. I hope it doesn't hurt too much. I will zoom in. Sorry, I'm forgetting to zoom in because for me it's all right. I like to work when it's small on the screen to see all the picture but maybe you can see all the details on YouTube player. Just to make an impression that there is something more, or maybe it's a small bump or a hill, or maybe the rock might be taller. Let's see that. Something like this. Uh, Tobias is uh, 
saying maybe it would be interesting to also have some kids on the other side of the balloon man so that he is more surrounded by them. But maybe that was not the goal of the image. Uh, yes, there are different, there are different varieties of compositions, of course, I mean, it, it depends on the goal. I mean, we can crop it and even make horizontal, oh, sorry, vertical and, uh, I mean, surround, uh, absolutely change the compo here. It really depends on the goal and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, sometimes the artists need to go for some minimum uh, fixing, like no, just not to be stuck on one image for all his life, uh, trying to find the absolute uh, truth, you know. It's absolutely not necessary sometimes and uh, you don't have to uh, spend so much time uh, experimenting. Sometimes just simple, uh, not, not simple, but I mean the, the first idea works very well. And there is no need to question it too much. Oh, let's bring just a bit of details here, so it's not that uncertain. All right. It doesn't look convincing, of course, with these rough strokes, but anyway. Uh, so we got something like this, and now it's time to change the back as well, because if you remember I was talking about this big rock on the left, which uh, like all the characters, the uh, characters here on the right, the boys, the kids and the characters on the left, they are all not exceeding the ground level. Like they are not breaking the horizontal line. They all belong to the earth part of the landscape. So we can try to remove this rock and to see how it will work. Let's try. Oh, where's my background layer? here uh, so let's print some straight horizontal line horizon I'm always saying horizontal when it's horizon uh, sorry for this fog We can try later, for instance, to mirror this rock and to bring it on the right side. The fog. Yeah, so now we have the clear vision of horizon. And these characters on foreground, they already break this horizon line so they are kind of either the beginning of the composition or they are the end if for instance this image would be like this uh, mirrored then they would be the end of the composition because the eyes tends to travel from, like depends on how you read in which country you live but in most of the countries we read from uh, left to right so our eyes feel more comfortable to read the visual composition from left to right so in this case uh, uh, 
of course the eye would be more comfortable to travel like this and in the end these dark figures here they would stop the, the movement and that would make the cycle the loop uh, of the reading inside the picture but in this case they are in, uh, introducing us to the compo it's like the like the entrance to the composition if we are again talking about the eye the human eye which tends to travel from left to right so in this case they are like the start of the composition the start of uh, how to say the prologue of uh, all the image let's maybe try to bring this rock to the right part of the image because it's pity to lose this amount of work up And uh, probably the last thing I would do here, or try to do here, is to increase the size of the front characters to underline the, <clears throat> the perspective uh, thing here. I think it might add a bit of air, this feel of distance. Uh, Tobias is asking, will you upload this stream afterwards? Uh, well, I I think that the streams like this for Patronauts, they will be um, uh, uh, they will be unlisted, of course. I want them to be only for you guys, and uh, so no one mess with the chat, and we can talk. You can ask questions or suggest something. But then it absolutely doesn't matter, and I think it will go public right away. Uh, so yes, it will be saved on my channel in the live stream uh, playlist. Live stream saves, I believe it's called. It will be on my channel, yes. Safi, I'm sorry, Safi, if you prefer to be called Sof or Sophie. Uh, also, if the dark figures are on the left, they give a sense of cornering the kids. Yes, that's true as well. Yes. They are locking the composition. They are locking it. Let's try to increase the size of them. Maybe a bit smaller. Too much dominance. Uh, maybe something like this. Yeah. Where these balloons comes from? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Can find the the source of the balloons in the sky. Oh, okay. I see now. Uh, 
and then of course like uh, if we are for if we solve better yeah okay so uh, <clears throat> uh so i like with the balloons it's not a problem at all i mean it can be rearranged it can be somewhere here somewhere here it's not a problem what i would personally do i would try probably to change even the placement of these characters because we can see that one of them is uh, tall and one of them is smaller so it probably even reverse it i can try quickly right now but again i'm trying because i'm not sure in the result uh, when i'm working on my personal uh, personal artworks i'm doing absolutely the same i'm experimenting all the time moving layers uh, changing colors uh, just in search of uh, something which suits my needs i never know for sure that if i do this i mean i know sometimes but uh usually i'm experimenting let's try just to see the option of changing the uh, poo -poo -poo -poo. I really b believe that I like it better, but again, it might be the matter of taste. Maybe even bringing him to the front. Mm. Uh, I think I like it better, to be honest. Let's stay with it. If it's some sort of robes, maybe I could draw it like this. Yep, and we can bring the balloon somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, something like this. Well, that would be my major advice here. Advices here. So I will zoom in again. Sorry guys, I'm forgetting to zoom in. Sof is asking, uh, your work uh, you work experimenting with professional works too yes when time allows it sometimes when uh, usually uh, time is stressed and uh, there is not too much time so uh, usually there are some already how to say presets are turning on in my mind and uh, i'm usually ma uh, doing something which i'm sure in uh, that it will be working for sure and uh, you understand me. and uh, Sometimes when time allows it, when there are no strict deadlines, uh, when there is a room for experiment, and of course I would prefer to experiment. Because uh, when you experiment, you first you learn something new, right? Or you got a greater chance to learn something new. And plus it's the big, uh, I think, training for mind as well. When we are always using the same tools, the same uh, approach, uh, uh, the same answers to the problems i mean it's it's moving us nowhere i mean we are not progressing we are not changing our points of view and uh, well you got me i guess so yeah well for this one i think that's it let's just try and compare how it was it was like this and this is the alternative which I think uh, for me it really works better. What we lose here uh, is the part of the oh, this big part of the landscape, which might be important, for instance, to if there were too much details, which tells us some story as well. That's one thing. Uh, then we can really th rethink it 
and uh, even here we can place some items there if there are, if there were some buildings if there were some narrative important things we could still place it here so i mean all this landscape doesn't deserve that much attention here it just draws our attention a bit from the what's really is going on here and uh, we need to highlight this thing because that's what makes this piece emotional that's what makes this piece uh, interesting well okay even this roughly done I, I in my eyes it works a bit better and let's quickly jump into the second image the second image is uh, uh, better done I, I mean well I'm starting to use these cheap words like better done of course I, I meant that uh, I, I think it requires almost no fixing. The only thing uh, which uh, I would change here, let's again create duplicate group. So uh, what? Uh, what catches my eye here, and uh, again, what doesn't deserve the attention, is this tree, in fact. And most of all, this contrast, which actually draws the attention to it. Plus the composition, all the composition of the image, because we start at the bottom, uh, or even if we start in the center of the picture, again, the movement of the composition is like this, it's all going it's all going up there on the right to the tree. Even the mountain is supporting this movement. Even the background is supporting this movement. So everything goes here rather than here, in fact. Uh, so what I would like to do here to try is to remove this uh, point of attraction, the tree trunk. And again, I like the values here very much, but I would like to try something which might uh, break it a bit, I would say. I will cut the boy uh, into the separate layer. Uh, they are crippled actually. I forgot to mention, maybe this is the part of the story Victor didn't send the description, uh, maybe he didn't want to, uh, but if he's watching, maybe he could bring us some details if he wants. Uh, from the other hand, now I'm thinking if he's living in Brazil, it might be some, I don't know, night time in Brazil right now. Okay, we got him on the lair, the boy I mean, and now we will try to do something with the trunk. My first idea would be to put the, uh, to make the trunk wider, because of this system of the roots, they are big, uh, they are huge, and uh, I don't care about the boy right now, I'm just trying to make something with the tree. Uh, Let's just to remove this hole, there will be some branches, of course. <clears throat> yes, like this, something like this. And I would put the green stuff there as well maybe just to try to remove this hole as well i hope it's uh nicely visible on youtube player uh guys if you if, if it's really very small just let me know i will try to come up with some decision how it can be arranged how the workspace can be arranged better to to bring you more details 
it's six in Brazil, six uh, like the morning, yeah, six a.m. Yeah. Well, then Victor probably sleeps, and he will wake up to the review. Yeah, something like that. So just a bit warmer. For example, and for the boy, what now we can do, we can either leave it like this, because it doesn't disturb me if he is a bit merging with the values of the tree. But also we can try to make his skin a bit uh, more pale, even if he stands in the shadow. It's just to try. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, I think that would be the major thing here. Uh, personally, I would do something with back with uh, the background as well, but I'm not sure if uh, it's really needed. I mean, it's just some very minor things. I always like the perpendicular motion when one vector is stopped by another one. So probably I would also try to do something. It, it's already here a bit. Like, uh, let me just to describe what I mean. If this is the vector like this, I would like to see something which is more or less perpendicular to it here. Because a lot of artists, they tend to make the same motion on background all the time and uh, sometimes it looks like some stream of things, but uh, not really making the interesting movements for the viewer's eye. The eye likes to change the direction, but staying inside the image, you know. It doesn't want to fly away to one point and that's it. So, let me just quickly try something and I think we will be done with it. Just to break a bit this movement, because there's too much of this movement to the tree to the trunk of the tree. You can even try to make it like this, so it goes from there and stops on this line of the edge of the cliff. Okay. So yeah, I think that would be the main things which I would uh, tune here. And uh, yeah, it was like this. And now it's like this. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the next artist who will be, let me see, in my folder, it will be, I might be absolutely wrong pronouncing the name, but it's Michael Araiti, I don't know if Michael watching us and uh, can actually say if I'm right or wrong. He sent one work and uh, additional sketches, so let's see. This is what he sent as an artwork. And I will just show the additional sketches because there is not too much to say about the sketches. I mean, they are done absolutely right. I mean, 
I don't know what to add there or open. Um, yeah, these are the sketches. I don't know if it's like a live drawing or I mean from the picture, from the photo, I mean. It looks a bit like this, that there was some uh, <clears throat> inspiration in the photos or uh, but I don't know, but it looks just like very nice sketches to me and I don't know what to to change here, but he here we can see that it comes from the mind. I, I think maybe there were some photo references used for the tank, maybe, I don't know, but uh, mostly I can see that it comes from the mind and uh, uh, what I would advise here is to not to be, uh, how would you say, uh, in the borders of the ratio, in the borders of the image which you choose, like you are starting always with some uh, particular format, particular ratio of the Im image, or maybe you crop it later, but you don't have to be shy, you don't have to be really s uh, thinking these boundaries. You can always think wider, but showing to the viewer only what uh, what's the spot of the story for instance here i would uh, personally would advise to start first of all with the very nice uh, geometric uh, layout or blocking out because right now there is a lot of mess uh, not only with the values here in dirt for instance let me just show you what i'm what i mean like here, these areas, it's not only the value problem, it's also the geometrical construction problem. I mean, I uh, there is absolutely, like this part is absolutely, how to say, questionable. <laughs> like we don't probably need them after all. And uh, what can be done is to get step back a bit Sorry for erasing the soldiers right now, but uh, I will bring them back later. So we got our horizon line and we try to make a simple model of what's going on of the landscape around. Trying to set up not probably precise perspective, but at least some sense of perspective here. Just not to be confused with this simplicity, it's always can be something can be built on top at any point of time, but uh, the base is very important here because that's how you place something on it. I mean, it's like if you build a tabouret or how it's called a chair, which is absolutely where it's standing. Uh, not horizontal, I mean, good luck to sit on this chair or to put a glass of water on it, on such a table, for instance. So the base is always important, how you start and how you define your perspective, just rough shapes, rough directions, uh, which show us uh, where we stand in and how low the vanishing point very roughly here. So now we can more precisely build on such a surface because we're already sure about this compo. No, uh, sorry, compo, but the surface, more or less. Now we can build, we can start with, uh, again, the like the classic drawing, you know, to see the base of something like if it would be a bump or a, a pile of some garbage or debris or whatever, 
you can just point where it will be located like this on this perspective uh, surface grid let's say I don't know a schematic grid and then you can try to build some bumps like this again geometric stay geometric and simple at, at this stage and you will see that it will go organic it's it, it will look more organic and uh, natural here just because the base is already set up nicely the same with the trench trench it's called right uh, i might be wrong uh, you can s for, for the defining it for the beginning you can stay very rough again you can precise it that yes it goes there it goes down this is the edge and it also goes to the perspective with some corruptions here I mean it's not the solid trench maybe it's not like the straight trench maybe it has some cavities and uh, it's irregular but anyway you try to stick to this you try to be convincing with your perspective and uh, so no one will wonder like what's really going on here Right, and, and so uh, I, I, that would be my uh, main advice here about the structure of the uh, landscape, the structure of what you are drawing. Try to be a bit more uh, rational and uh, analytical here. Don't just uh, don't do the ground like uh, clouds, for instance. Even clouds deserve more attention because uh, when you start to think the same perspective grid about the clouds you will start to notice the same thing actually which you did with the earth part it's the same if you, if, if you put some perspective grid you will notice that it's might look more dynamic might look more you know natural and organic and underline if it's like some dramatic picture it can underline the action and things well currently i drew something which is kind of symmetrical it's not really cool but i think you got my point what i meant even if you think about this perspective in the clouds it can bring you some benefits as well like this that's what i meant and uh, what i was talking in the very beginning about the don't be shy with the uh how to say with the boundaries of your image uh with the edges of your image because uh, uh because sometimes it's not important to show everything like what you got like if you are drawing the tank you don't have to draw it completely like if it's not a concept art for instance if you are drawing a concept art for the tank of course everyone would like to see every detail on it like you can just crop it but for the illustration you don't have to do it uh, to show everything and uh, here my eye was uh, when I first time opened this image my eyes were stuck on this particular place here when uh, it almost hits the border but there is no particular point uh, point here I mean uh, why to draw this attention here it's not really needed nothing's going on there and uh, it's just the tank stop and 
Not at all, but you got my point. Uh, so let's see. I will just, I don't know, I'm usually using some, uh, uh, I'm going and Google some photos when I'm drawing some techniques, if I'm saying it correctly, techniques, I don't know, cars, uh, vehicles, I'm not really good with remembering all the, all the details on the vehicles, so I need to go see the pictures and see how it looks like, but here I just roughly want to precise what I mean. I don't know what's going on there with the construction and things. I just want to precise that you can absolutely freely make it more massive and put it out of the out of the uh, your ratio, out of your image absolutely without any sorrow. I, I, I don't know what I'm drawing. This tank is so complex. Well, yeah, so uh, I hope you, uh, you got my point, that wh what I meant. I think that would look better. Yeah, to me it definitely looks better because we don't have to have this uh, very middle point, like it cuts the image in two and plus it points on the very edge and plus it's the lightest contrast. Well, here is the contrasty part again, because I know it's important to draw our attention to this soldier here. He's on the foreground also, uh, but here it's not necessary to do this. So it can be just go out of the image. And plus sometimes you can use the very simple trick with uh, fogging things out, you know. If you want to make it even less visible and obvious, you can just fog it out a bit. It might be you always concept artist or artist can always come up with decision how to put the fog into the picture. It might be the fire somewhere here or behind the tank and uh, it's it's producing a lot of smoke here and uh, this smoke is warping the foreground a bit and, you know, there are always ways to, to do something like this. Yeah. Because it's again, it's even here it will be a tank. Everyone will understand that it's a tank. I mean, not the way I drew it, but I mean, putting more details there and uh, it will be absolutely clear. That, yes, that's a fallen tank which fell into the trench. So there is no point to put it all in the picture, like trying to depict all the tank in the picture. Can even try to crop it like this, you know, I don't know, like this, and still it will be the tank and and nothing will happen with it, so I mean, I hope you got my point. Uh, yeah, so that's probably it uh, with this uh, picture. The only thing I would uh, uh, also, I, I know that in original uh, there was an intention to to make bright the middle of the picture, like to put some reflections here on the ground and uh, to highlight the center. But maybe, uh, it's working very slow, it's a high resolution image. Um, 
maybe there is a point to define like which part of the image will be bright, which part of the image will uh, draw our attention and which is not supposed to draw our attention. For instance, in this one, since the soldier is here, <coughs> we see more soldiers here. I would probably choose this left part for be more important and the right part will be less important. So again, I can introduce some uh, low contrast values here. It's again, it might be some smoke in the background. It's, it's absolutely doesn't matter. There are different tricks to do this. And here I will put the area of high contrast. The soldiers will be in more contrast to the background and Yeah. Something like this. So that's probably it with the with this picture and uh, hope it was helpful. And we will jump to the next artist. Oh, by the way, 10 people are watching. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, the next one is supposed to be Igor Homsky, but uh, I think I would prefer to make a review in Russian with Igor and uh, uh, I don't know how it will be but I really would prefer to he's the only Russian speaking guy who sent me artworks but he's a very talented guy from the other hand and I don't even want to draw on his images <laughs> so uh, if you will excuse me, I will make the review in Russian, but I don't think that it will be very long. There are not too much things to to notice. In fact, I will open his works. If you can see this, and I will open a few more. If Igor is watching, maybe he could type us if uh, it's okay if I will do it in English or it's better in Russian. It absolutely depends on you, so uh, the way you prefer. I think that uh, if it's in English, it would be interesting to everyone, but if you really want it to be in Russian, then it's absolutely alright. Let's just wait, maybe I don't know if Igor is watching us. He was in the beginning of the stream, I guess. So maybe... Oh, it's... Uh, Alright, so he said that it's okay to make it in English, but again, Igor, you don't have to be confused if you really think that's in Russian. Yeah, if if you really would prefer it in Russian, there is no problem with that. Just really let me know. Anyway, okay, so anyway, there is not too much to fix or whatever, because uh, I think Igor is a very talented guy and uh, I like his ideas, actually. 
because uh, not only how he draws, but uh, his ideas are very nice and uh, I would say that they uh, remind me my ideas probably like, I don't know, five years ago I was in the same mindset, I don't know. And uh, uh, I was drawing even like similar things like the UFO with the... Uh, well, Taran is here in the stream as well. Nastasia Taran, she's one of the moderators as well on Speed Paint Forum and Terpelling. Hi, Nastasia. And, uh, well, yeah, so uh, I was drawing the similar topics, similar uh, stories, and or, or at least I'm, I'm not saying that all of them, I'm just saying that in the same uh, mind stream, mind flow, and uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's really beautifully done, it's like an, almost an illustration for a book, I mean, probably it was, I don't know for sure, but I mean, if you put the title here, like, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever, uh, it's, it's like a book, you know, and if you see a book like this on the shelves, uh, it uh, really captures the attention. I mean, it's nicely drawn, nice light, uh, nice colors, and uh, the mood itself, it's really cool. So, if we are talking about each image, like for this one, I would just probably advise to pay more attention to the perspective, because of course it's convincing, It's it's you, you don't notice it at the f first glance, but uh, things like this that... Uh, we suppose that these uh, green leaves, they are circle, circles, in fact, and uh, we presume that the, how to say, like this part, will match the leaves, the perspective of the leaves, right? I mean, the, how it's called, fuck, sorry, the waves on the, in the pond, we would presume them to match the leaves perspective so i mean this is a very small thing a very small thing and uh, it won't change hold the image but it will make it more convincing and uh, you know that's what's wrong with my brushes yeah uh, i will i will just try it quickly and uh even the legs, you know, it's... I uh, would like to see how it matches. Almost flat. It's almost flat like this. I will just erase these ones because I don't have time to draw everything. And uh, I mean, you got my point anyway. So yeah, just to fix the perspective a bit. Uh, what I usually do, and it saves a lot of time, uh, I would... I mean, everyone knows it, of course. But I'm using the shapes in this case, so I can draw the circle. I hope it's visible. I'm transforming the circle into the... matching the perspective the way I want. And then I can reuse this path, right? This path is also always stored here if you don't delete it in the path tab in Photoshop and you can always get back to it and uh, just try not to delete it. I don't know if there is an option to block it from deleting or something. Uh, sometimes you can occasionally delete the path, but anyway, uh, it's always here. You can always resize it. You can always I mean, move it on the canvas, uh, and you can always stroke it or make selections, right? So if I'm on separate layer and uh, I pick up the brush like this size, and I right click and I stroke path, it will bring this stroke. Oh, it's it's not a good brush for this. Sorry, I will pick up something else. Doesn't matter. Yeah, stroke path, 
and it will stroke this kind of thing. Then you can transform path. You can just make it bigger. I mean proportionally. And stroke one more time. And then for instance you can move this path. You can transform and again proportionally you make it smaller. And you can make selection. And on the separate layer you can draw a leaf, for example, or green, like this. So you know what I mean. I mean it's it's just to stay in the same perspective for this particular uh, type of images, for this particular image I would say even. This could be one of the solutions to have it more convincing so it's all in the same perspective grid and uh, on the same surface and uh, it doesn't disturb the eye too much. However, it's this one, I, I, I have just another one, another notice, but it's not very important here, I would say. It's about the anatomy and the gestures. Maybe at some points, uh, uh, it's really, really good to go to the mirror and try to stand in the pose and as natural as possible and to see it's not necessary to make pictures. Sometimes if you don't have time, you can make pictures and make some overpaint or whatever to save a lot of time. But uh, sometimes even posing in front of the mirror is good. For instance, uh, making this straight palm uh, showing the straight palm like this, I, I think it makes the hand broken here. I certainly need to... Again, in my opinion, I need to... If we are looking from the side, let's make it... Like a scheme. Uh, so right now it looks to me if again looking from the side it looks to me like it's broken like this this is the palm if I'm talking correctly palm right what could be better again to see in the mirror and trying to see how it could be more natural, more, you know, more organic. And you will see something like this, uh, again, from the side view. It's just such a awful skin. However, I, I, I hope it's, you can understand it. Yeah. So you'd probably see something like this and it's already more complicated of course to to do but uh, I mean here on the original one uh, this reads to me I, I can read this thing which tells me that it's uh, very simplified or even broken and not natural when just a bit more time spent on this one and you can get a better result with a uh, more correct uh, gestures this one for instance is very nicely done there is no need to fix anything there and uh, uh, it's just when let's try this trick if 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 i will just hit hide this uh hand here maybe he's like i don't know holding his hand behind it it, it looks to me more natural it looks uh, more organic even just with this uh, one hand visible, his left hand, it looks more organic to me. With this hand, it's a, a bit breaking the magic and uh, of the gestures and uh, says like that um, uh, I uh, I didn't have time, so I just placed it like this and or something else. You know, it's that's the only thing. A and plus that it's so much lit. I would say so much contrast here it draws attention as well and uh, it's right in the center of the image 
so yeah I would pay more attention to it as well okay for this image it's enough I think it's a good one anyway and uh, it's just some very minor uh, things uh, this one is very lovely done I like the uh, a bit how to say unsaturated colors and uh, bleached in some at some point and uh, this pale dry grass is very nice looking sorry guys I will just close the window a bit because it's too much light Uh, well, yeah. So in in this style, uh, style in this style, I think it's absolutely all right. Uh, it works well. It uh, makes a certain impression. Uh, it's not as gloomy or very dark, uh, even including such a dark character. So it's uh, I, I would consider it to be. I don't know, some nice illustration to some uh, black humor novel or series or whatever. Uh, very interesting and very nice background, doesn't deserve any more work, the composition is nice. Uh, the only thing which I noticed here, again the anatomical thing, is the hands. Like the hands, especially his right hand, deserves really more attention. And it's again the matter of why you need to go to the mirror time to time and check. You can, everyone can find the book, everyone can find his own hands, right? And you can just go and uh, double check. Uh, it's the simplest way. I mean, everyone got a mirror. I mean, if you don't have a mirror, just order one. I mean, it's the cheapest thing. And. Uh, I think every artist should have a mirror. How else are you gonna study some particular gestures or things like this? A lot of artists, of course, they are visiting some classes where they draw in the live models and things like this. But I mean, when you need to do fix uh, fix something right now, right here, mirror is the best and cheapest and the fastest solution. So, of course, like the hand draws attention like how he holds the book it's not natural uh, mm, I, I don't know what to say here it's it's really breaks a bit the mood of all the picture and i don't know if it's really for me right now it's so important trying to spend time and fixing it i'm pretty sure that eager uh, see the problem as well Uh, if he would let uh, me somewhere, maybe even in private in Discord or somewhere, if he see this problem, it would be very important because if he don't, then maybe really some additional uh, live drawing can be helpful in this case. But if it was some very fast uh, thing to do, like, I don't know, maybe he just wanted to make it as a very fast sketch, or maybe it was a task to make it fast, then okay, it, it can be, and uh, that's why we can understand that, okay, there was not too much time to spend on this particular thing. So, again, anyway, uh, how we are holding the books? We... It's complicated. Ah, Jamie is writing me that I'm like, yeah, that I'm not changing the names in OBS, so I'm probably... <laughs> well, I just uh, tried to introduce this line uh, right before the stream, so of course I forgot about it. My bad, my bad. I will then list uh, all the artists, I will list them in description of the video, so... All right, thanks for the comment, Jimmy. Okay, uh, so again, the book, uh, it, it will be a big uh, trouble for me as well. I would probably go and see in the mirror as well when I would draw it. 
what I'm doing in my sketches, and I precise sketches, not the fine art, I always tend to draw hands like a, uh, like a sphere at the beginning. Uh, it will be complicated for me to fix it right now. Uh, the easiest solution, if we again like can't fix something right now, we can probably try to come up with some easy solutions. Like, okay, I don't know how he holds the book here. So maybe we will just move this hand here. Let me pick up the right. Maybe he's just holding the side of the book, or maybe he's pointing with his finger something in the book. It's like the, the artist is creating his own piece, right? And uh, the any 2D artwork is nothing but an illusion, right? It tells us about some illusion, it shows the viewer some illusion of 3D space. When it's actually just a screen or it's an illustration in the book, it's flat. So we are actually manipulating the uh, viewer's mind, which means that we are creating the illusion of something. So it's up to you as a creator how you making this illusion. Like uh, you are the author of your trick, of your magic trick, and uh, you don't have always to stick to the, some truth like sometimes you can hide mistakes if you are not sure with something you can just uh, uh, hide it or find the uh, very easy way to avoid drawing this if it's possible and uh, that's it then this arm will be complicated i would do it maybe in this movement if we Again, like uh, I'm, I'm drawing right now, and I want to go and grab a book and see how it's how it lays in the hand, and to be more precise, I don't really need, uh, think it's needed right now to to do this fixing here because again, I'm pretty sure that eager to see that there might be some problem, and uh, maybe he's working on it currently somehow, practicing the hands drawing well yeah so i would do something uh, i mean not would do but i mean i would note uh, notice the hands here and the other thing about this image uh, let's double check yeah i think it's more convincing now and and the second uh second i said second second thing i would like to say is about the a bit dividing the who is it goat character and the boy uh, because right now they're on background, they are almost like the boy linked to the go goat and uh, they became one. And I wanted to try again, I precise to try, I, I'm not sure if it will be better. I wanted to, uh, to see if, for instance, this shoulder, we can see that there is a bit of light on this shoulder, which doesn't reach the goat's belly and it makes this contrast here on the uh, for uh, on this front shoulder so i wanted to see if uh, we can do something with the other shoulder and maybe this would be somehow oh there is so much sun outside it was gloomy and cloudy And now I can barely see my screen. Sorry for these interruptions. And here I would like to try to make the shoulder dark, but do something with the goat to make his belly a bit lighter. Let's try something. I'm not sure if it will work. Uh, for example, let's say we could put some neutral 
gray whatever I'm picking up from the image itself just to remove it, the dark value a bit to make it more smooth and gray not making it light just like you know fading a bit and uh, making it not that important right I'm gonna I'm doing it very quickly so I'm doing it all manually it's easier for me to process and then I want to bring this shoulder darker than the background on the goat which we made like this foggy thing I want to make it darker the shoulder picking up the values from the picture and trying this it's a very common thing and it's at some space and feel of space uh, of distance in the portraits when actually the for example the front shoulder uh, is catching some light on the dark background but the things are opposite on the other side well it doesn't work in my opinion very well here because again I was confused about adding this fog to the goat I don't know what is this fog about and but still we can tune it a bit and maybe see not a big fan, not a big fan. Maybe I would try something else here or to see better what can be done. But this way, uh, let's try quickly do something like this. Uh, let's try to make it the backlight, the other shoulder, or maybe something like this. but at the same time remove these dark uh, uh, shadows on the goat which are making like almost this movement around his shoulders you know just to precise this contrast or something let's remove it a bit and see how it will look like i will just take some neutral gray color from here and remove this dark a bit I will probably use the other brush. So uh, here I would understand why the contrast here, like the dark hair and the light skin, because that's the main character and we want to pay... The, fir the first attention should be drawn to this particular part of the image, but uh, why to precise this, emphasize this, uh, uh, silhouettes like dark on dark just make it all dark the face already will pop up and it will tell us about the placement of the character there is no need to again show everything and uh, but let's try something like this and I will change the like this Well, almost no effect. Complicated, complicated. But after all, it's not that big, mi uh, not a mistake, but uh, not a big problem. Let's try to merge everything then. Let's try to merge and not precise absolutely the shoulders and see how it work, how it works. Since the, the only light is the backlight, which is like some fog, which is uh, scattering some light, and the candle, we can try to... Where I was drawing? Uh, we can try to put everything in the shadow, which absolutely doesn't deserve to catch any light.
like this. Again, it's just the tries. Uh, I don't know will it work or not. I'm just trying things. Let's say he catches some light from the candle here. And maybe a bit there, just a bit. There might be some shadow from the book or whatever. Oops, I got some there. there. Well, yeah, I, I think that would be the best uh, thing here. Yeah, if uh, I was doing it, I would probably go for this one, but more precise. I mean, precise in the shadows from the book and uh, the color values and things like this. And of course, there will be a backlight on the goats, but joking. But why not? And maybe on the boy as well. But again, it's, it deserves a lot of attention, more attention and... Yeah. So yeah, I, I would probably do the same effect like uh, you did on the goat with this light here, here. Like we can clearly see the light from the candle. So I would try to do the same with the boy. With the same values and uh, effects. Yeah, so again, this image uh, I think is very nicely done and it's... Uh, good as it is already so it's just some minor things this one uh, again i don't want to talk about the lights the lights are good colors are good uh, everything is nice the only thing and probably uh, it's a big change of course uh, and i will do it very schematic because uh, i don't think i will have enough time uh, small way. Uh, so yeah, I like the composition here, at, at least the sense of composition, but I would go even a bit more radical and um, I will quickly explain in gray what I mean. Uh, so yeah, I, I would go for the radical composition like this. I like these compositions, by the way, and uh, recently, and I'm exp I was experimenting with it too much, w like this. It's very simple. I mean, particular to this image, we would say there is something there, and there is some th some major things going on there, here on the right. Uh, so yeah, and I would stay here a bit more simple. Uh, right now what we can see, we can see a bouncy composition, as I would say, and the bouncy and wavy, it's even underlined with the thread, or how it's called, the path here. So it's bouncy, because if we read the perspective, we can see that it, it looks here. Uh, then there is this road. This building looks here. So it's all like looking in different directions. What I would do probably is to try and uh, break it a bit and make this, for instance, part absolutely frontal. I'm sorry for erasing everything, but uh, I can't explain it any better 
<coughs> just give me a second here and I will and it will be clear what I mean as to make it barn or uh, house frontal it might not work though I, I don't know I'm trying What's good here is to precise the perspective, just probably just for us maybe, since it's going downhill or something like this, it's a bit more complicated to understand it. Or maybe to make it simple and uh, readable, we can break this, if this going downhill, this thing uh, if it's a hill then we could break it here like the hill stops here and again there is a flat surface the horizontal one We can even emphasize this idea with the movement of the fence and the path. We can bring it right here or even right here. It doesn't matter. And then it goes more flat. And the same with the fence. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot to zoom in. I, I think I'm like doodling something which is like two pixels on the screen. So yeah, the fence goes down and then it goes up like this, flat. I hope it's clear what uh, I'm trying to say. Yeah, so, and there will be this character standing or looking out or whatever. Whatever, he got a gun or something. Well, yeah, I think it's clear what I meant. Yeah, just need to be very quickly, I'm sorry, because otherwise it will take like six hours of stream and I don't have that much time today. But I still will point everything what I think, no worries just probably not that accurate drawing but i think that's uh understandable what i meant here with this particular image uh it's it's not bad like it was i'm just thinking how to make it more structural and uh to emphasize this composition like basically this thing which i yeah which i drew like this in gray yeah otherwise it's very nice piece and uh nicely rendered of course again 
eager pay attention to hands and uh, I don't know try to if if you don't have a gun uh, you just take a broom or something try to hold it as a gun and you will see and even without mirror you know you can sit by your desk and uh, you can hold something like a gun and you already can rotate your hands and see understand how structurally it's uh, anatomically correct and how more natural it can be looking more organic yeah okay so yeah good luck with uh drawing more nice art eager it's very nice uh, that you send your artworks here but there are not too much uh, things to say about them only some minor suggestions and basically it's uh, anatomical issues and that's it these are good illustrations good uh, good images and we will jump to another artist who is, uh, let me see, Melissa Rupert. I, I hope I'm correctly again. It's a French name, I suppose, and uh, I'm not that good in French, so sorry. I will uh, show here because she sent some sketches and uh, two artworks as well. Let's see. So I'm opening artworks right now. And I will make a very, very small pause, guys. Five minutes as usual. Yeah, hello again, everyone. I hope you are not that tired. I'm starting to be a bit. Uh, it's been like two hours already, almost. Uh, well, okay, anyway, uh, uh, I'm gonna show some sketches which she sent also. Uh, I hope it's visible, it's on the screen. The sketches, uh, I don't know, it's just like some interesting ideas uh, about some creatures. Uh, uh, I like 
maybe I don't know if it's true or not, but I like that it's just uh, to capture some ideas. I mean, it's not some art piece. Uh, probably it's not even designed to be some published art or whatever. It's just to capture some ideas. Uh, yeah. I mean, every artist got his own sketchbook where he collects ideas. It doesn't matter how it's drawn or how well uh, refined. Uh, it's absolutely not a matter there. And uh, these are nicely done. I mean, it reminds me the I don't know maybe Amanita Design is the uh, game development company which made the uh, Samarost game. Machinarium, uh, what was the name of the artist who was working there, I forgot, uh, and probably will never remember, anyway you can google Machinarium art uh, and you will see there is a guy from Germany, I don't know where he lives right now in Czech Republic or not, but uh, I think he's originally from Germany. Yeah, so these kind of sketches, uh, he, they actually, in Machinarium, they wanted to achieve some unusual drawing style. It's done, if no, if you didn't see the game Machinarium, you can even watch the trailer and you will see that it's done like almost in traditional, uh, with the traditional feeling, a, a traditional approach to visual style and uh, it's almost like drawn with the pencil and uh, colored with watercolors and uh, I've heard that the artist who was developing it, the name I can't remember, I said, and uh, he was actually at some point even drawing with his left hand uh, when he is right-handed. He was drawing with his left hand to achieve some particular, I don't know how to say, childish uh, style or something like this. So. That's kind of an interesting experiment, but let's jump to the um, artworks which uh, Melissa sent to me. Uh, I don't know, I, I think I will start with this one. I don't think it requires too much work. I hope it's visible. It's very dark, but uh, that's the point. Uh, I will zoom in even more. Scroll it. So here we can see some very strange, uh, awkward, weird place. Some roots with the eyes on the floor and some characters sitting. I hope you see that uh, within the shadow areas, the body is kind of full of some disgusting things and And there is a very dark eye here. I don't know if you can see it. But it's a very dark eye. No one can see this. Okay. Anyway, I absolutely don't have anything to add here. Rather than maybe make this composition a bit more, again, structural. Like, don't be shy. I will create the new layer and say, uh, try to describe what I mean. Uh, this kind of thickness, uh, like, like, like this image is more like a conceptual one, right? It's not some, I don't know, another art for game production or something. It might be, but I mean, it's more like a, some kind of like personal experiments uh, with some concept conceptual uh, ideas and uh, approaches so like for instance this thickness and this thickness uh, you can kind of absolutely ignore this perspective information even i would say i will try but it will look very awful on this soft image it's very nicely refined and uh, with the soft textures and soft brushes but anyway i will try just to uh, try to be a bit more clear uh, so yeah just to uh, to ignore some of the information just to filter some of the information how 
how important it is to have this perspective here. Like, of course, it's uh, this light, the way it's moving, the how it lays on the floor, it's the uh, entrance to the composition, right? Uh, it's absolutely understandable, but uh, how much do we care about perspective here? I mean, it doesn't tell us too much about the room or uh, interior of the room. It's, it's really something which we can just uh, simply ignore. And uh, we can stay with only this conceptual idea, the idea of the beam of light, which transforms or other either keeps something on the body sorry i'm trying to think at the same time draw and think my biggest concern uh yeah so just again like i, I would ignore this information about the light here about the perspective sorry and stay with the very solid uh, um, structure. I, I don't know, my English is so bad, it sucks. <coughs> ah, sorry. So yeah, you got my point. And plus we have less dividers here, because here this place looks very weak. The bottom right Part, I will precise this one the, no. this one this part looks very weak compared to this mess and just to support it a bit uh, we can make it equal like make less dividers here and uh, you know just so it's not like like this beam of light doesn't divide that much but still we didn't touch the body so it's not necessary here well yeah the, another thing would be for me to make the eye a bit more visible i know that it's a part of idea that it's hidden somewhere in the dark and it's gloomy and uh, uh, very mysterious but still it's a very good point of uh on on the composition like uh it's really supports the composition if there was no this eye then probably it would be just well it's not that bad but i mean with the eye it looks obviously a bit more interesting the only thing i would try to maybe work even staying with the same values here doesn't bring too much contrast here maybe trying to precise the reflections a bit more to say that it's a kind of important thing here hanging important for the idea if it's important for the idea of course just trying to spend more time like finding the interesting reflections you know Maybe there will be some reflections from this beam of light. Just like, sorry, some small, small sparkles. Faded. Something like this, you know, I'm not saying that to make it vivid and looking very, just a bit more glossiness, a bit more texture and love to it i mean love from the artistic point of view that you emphasize that the importance of this uh, thing here that's it about this image that's it i like it it's very moody it's interesting it's like can be a part of some video clip with some interesting music it's really cool so uh, very nicely done uh, the other one though and it's this one I think here uh, it's uh, the only problem, again, if you ask me, as I said in the beginning, it might be not the problem, but uh, for me, 
I can see that the anatomy issue, the anatomy, the uh, anatomy. So sometimes when you draw the characters like this, sometimes when you draw monsters or something, you can of course exaggerate. You can go absolutely grotesque and uh, even like break the bones or whatever. It doesn't matter too much, but it still should look uh, anthropomorphic. It should look something which we can recognize how it moves. We can we, we need to predict how it moves because uh, each viewer uh, wants to see how w what will be the next frame of it, what will happen next, or at least he should try to be interested in the next movement, the next frame, the next second, next minute. So that's why. Uh, Sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes it's good to really pay attention to anatomy, even if it's weird, if it if it's distorted or something, to make it more interesting, to make it uh, uh, like he here, for instance. I don't feel that uh, it was the point to make such a confusing anatomy. I think that it's that that you wanted to do something in particular, but maybe you didn't achieve this result. And I don't know if you can type or maybe type me somewhere on Discord uh, if you if you have some certain concerns about this image, if you see some mistakes, because that's important. Anyway, uh, if I will start to draw, I, I can spend a lot of time here, but my major thing will be f really fixing the posture, fixing the anatomy. Uh, and probably the first thing I would start to do is defining if it's important to follow the perspective, if it's important to really show that it, this high guy is huge. Because right now I can see that he is huge just because there are trees, right? Look, for example, if I will erase the trees. If I'm erasing the trees, uh, it loses the its uh, how to say uh, the scale, right? So the only purpose for the trees here, uh, there might be some other purpose. I mean, but uh, the trees here are only to precise the scale of this creature. It's either very small trees or it's either very big creature. But without the trees, we really can't say it. Just let me see, because Melissa, I think she sent me something. Yeah, okay. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say it or not, but generally Melissa said that uh, she sees some something is wrong, but uh, in generally in general she don't see the problems. But anyway, yeah, the anatomy. I'm not here. I'm not an anatomy teacher, but it requires a lot of practice. I would say with the anatomy, it's probably not a good idea to start learning it uh, by yourself uh, with the anatomy books. It's really better to join some classes, uh, even temporary classes, like for one month's course, where you draw life models and you and the teacher explains you the basic principles, how bones are connected, uh, which bones are for which movement, which muscles for which movements, so where they start, where they attach and uh, things like this. Uh, that would be very helpful. And uh, right now I really can't explain anything. I can try to draw and uh, to make this character look a bit better in my understanding of anatomy. Uh, but I don't think that uh, 
I mean, it will help you with the further researchers. For the further researchers, I would really advise you to make live drawings and uh, most preferably to join some courses, to join some small, I don't know how it's called, like some small community of people who are drawing and studying the anatomy and uh, yeah, I think that will be very helpful. But anyway, yeah, just to quickly proceed on this one, uh, we see the, that the trees here are uh, serving the goal to tell us about the scale of the creature, but nothing else. When I remove the trees, uh, this creature, we it's hard to say like if it's a regular human size or it's a bit bigger. I mean, there is nothing, okay, there's some rocks here. Uh, which can probably tell us some information, but rather than that, nothing. And uh, I would start with really, if we are again talking about fixing this particular image, I will start with fixing the pose, the silhouette, and it's a lot of work. It should be an hours of work of sitting and trying this, trying that, but always try to stay in some particular perspective. If his body is rotated, if his uh, if this part is rotated in in this direction, so you you need to follow the perspective. If his shoulders are rotated a bit different from this part, I mean it's 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 a lot of work and uh, trying to stick to this perspective thing, which uh, will tell us at least about the vanishing point, about the camera position right so we already can feel that we are looking on this creature from from the bottom and that it's something huge like take a picture of yourself from the bottom and uh, you will see how this perspective makes you look great and uh, like a lot of musicians are using this especially the rappers pictures from the bottom because they look solid and more, how to say, more important. So again, if I start, it's 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 very very. It will require a lot of time because, to be honest, I'm not that good with the knowledge of anatomy. I have some certain sense of how it might be, but uh, I never was refreshing my knowledge about anatomy after art school. So I only can, I forgot even the names of all the bones and muscles and I'm not even talking about the light here, just trying to find the silhouette which will tell us that this creature, that at least we are taking this picture from the bottom, that we are standing or laying on the ground very low compared to this creature. probably not pick up the colors from the image itself because it's a bit messy. I mean not the image but the, when you pick up random colors it's not that clear.
I think that this part, for instance, will be way upper because of again this perspective distortion. We are tricking the things like these bumps here and here, shoulders. Knees. Well, I think that the point is uh, more or less clear here. Uh, first, more attention to anatomy. And the second, uh, this will help you to be, to constrain more, again, organic and how to say, I don't know, in English, plastic or no, plastic is something else. But I mean, you understand, you, you, can predict the movements you can uh, the the viewer shall not break his mind trying to understand how it stands how it's uh, you you know what I mean it, it, it should quickly read the message rather than trying to solve the puzzle of uh, uh, where it stands and uh, why one arm is bigger than the other and things like this if it's not the point of the artist again, which in this case I don't think it was. That's uh, let's duplicate the layer, the original one. I will just bravely merge it. Uh, by the way, you can find uh, Melissa's work uh, on ArtStation. And it's a pretty nice collection, if you are interested, uh, take a look. There are, for instance, uh, as an example of what I was uh, talking about also, uh, you know the caricature guys, the guys who are making caricatures, they are usually taking the picture of the celebrity or whatever, uh, whoever, sorry, and uh, they distort it with liquefying filter in Photoshop or something like this to make some comic look, and then they overpaint it on top to make the painterly look. I mean... Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of such a thing, uh, it doesn't like really, how to say, makes me interested in this or never was a big fan. And uh, anyway, it's very easy to always distinguish the artist who understands the basic things, at least the basic things in anatomy, the facial structure. And the artist who understands nothing, because uh, when the, it comes to distort the face and make it look comical, the artist who lack the 
anatomy knowledge is he's doing it so obvious i mean he's distorting it in the ways which are becoming unpleasant for the eye it's not comforting the viewer's eye it's not uh, it's uh, starts to be extremely messy unnatural unorganic and i don't know if this word exists unorganic and this way it becomes some crippled uh, awful looking creature rather than some uh, celebrity which was drawn in the funny way or any other way uh, you got my point so the same with the uh, drawing the characters like in this image uh, when you lack some knowledge in anatomy and you want to make some creature with distorted proportions uh, like some uh, i don't know whatever guy from the hell or yeah some beast uh, monster anthropomorphic monster uh, you start to distort things but you distort them unnaturally you distort them in this way uh, that it more becomes like unrecognizable it more becomes like a messy mess of something rather than some convincing joint or convincing uh, muscle bump or i don't know yeah i hope i'm clear so of course it's very important i think if you want to concentrate on drawing the characters like uh, like this like on this image more then you should pay more attention i guess to the basic anatomy and get your practice get your practice with life model with uh, i don't know drawing yourself again in the mirror time to time uh, please don't try to use pictures i mean try to avoid pictures uh, i mean drawing from the photo references or over painting the photo references it's not helping at all the, the the main key about learning anatomy and drawing from life models is that you can go around that's it's not that you are standing on one point and uh, you are making the representation the 2d representation of what you see it's absolutely not the point there the point there is to study to study it means that you need to go around the model you need to understand how the why this particular facet of the form is in the shadow you need to go around and to see how long is this facet actually not only from your point of view but how it behaves in the 3d space and that's what you give the sense of how shapes uh, behave in the space uh, how light uh, uh, bounces them reflects from them in which amount and in which angles so please if you want to learn anatomy or in, in improve your skills in drawing human drawing people please don't use photo references try to do it live at least draw yourself you can always turn your hand in the mirror and to look how the light changes to understand all these facets all these basic volumes here yeah that would be the recommendation i think i will be soon done with this i just wanted quickly to uh, just a second just to fix a bit the and the gravity point here maybe like this because he was falling a bit on the side yeah well yeah something like this I, I, this image is all about uh, anatomy because this is the main character you wanted to pay more attention to it it's the main point of interest in this image so that's what deserves more attention more love and uh, well you got my point i don't want to even talk about the background here it's all absolutely customizable it's uh, it can even stay like this very painterly and things like this if the all these points of attraction are done 
uh, with the maximum possible attention yeah so so if there are no doubts about the perspective about the structure of the body everything else is absolutely all right and uh, i won't even jump into like some perspective things or i don't know clouds or rendering issues or things like this it's it can be even like this not absolutely deserve any more attention well yeah i th I, I hope it was helpful uh, I again I don't want to jump further and start to draw light here and things because it will just require the time I think my point was clear and uh, all we need is a uh, understanding how the anthropomorphic uh, body can work anatomy muscles drawing life practice and everything will be better better and better good Anyway, the picture is moody, the idea and everything, yeah, it's like something about, I don't know, hell and time and I don't know if it's a city on the back or if it just spikes, maybe it's just spikes, yeah. Okay, thank you, Melissa, for your works and uh, let's jump to another artist, which will be... Let me open. <clears throat> Which will be Jimmy. Which was in the chat, I suppose. So actually, Jimmy sent uh, a link to his. Uh, I don't know how it's it's is it portfolio or just some folder uh, or whatever it, with some sketches. So uh, I will just quickly review, change the name. Are you tired, guys, to watch this? when I'm repeating all the same things twice or three times. That's my dark side. I'm always repeating. Everyone already got everything, but I still keep repeating and transform it into some metaphors and things like this when everyone got it. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's see. So I picked up, uh, I followed the link which Jimmy sent and I picked up few sketches. And one I presume live drawing like this. Made on canvas. I'm out of water. I won't say anything about this study because it's obviously a study and it's actually very nicely done. I mean, no, I, I can't add or do anything about it. I would probably complain about this handle reaching the very edge of the image, but maybe it's just a crop. I, I don't know. So I mean, I mean, it could be better composed uh, by moving or cropping it like this. You know, just you won't lose too much if you crop the teapot. It could be like a bit more balanced like this. Or obviously if you don't want to crop you... I'm doing something very bad here, sorry. Yeah. If you don't want to crop, and I understand that it's not a digital thing, uh, so it's absolutely useless to say, but... I mean, just... You should have added some space on the right obviously, so the bottle doesn't reach the very edge of the painting, so the handle of the teapot doesn't do the same to the left side. Other than that, it's absolutely cool study and uh, very nice brush strokes, very fresh. I don't know if it's visible there, but here's the texture of canvas and very nice looking, very brave stroking, nice. 
I like it. So here I don't know what to say. Let's see through all the sketches. These are just some reminding just thumbnails. This I don't know if it was done uh, from the picture or it's from imagination. Uh, to me it looks like there was some photo reference. There are some again landscape sketches and something about the book of the jungle I presume some thumbs Buddy Boo is writing that this is Taran. I don't believe that it's Taran. Is it Taran? Ah, you mean ah this sketch? Yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, it's the what what was yeah. I I I didn't. I, I watched just few episodes of Game of Thrones and I I quit. I I couldn't go further and I absolutely not aware about the characters there. I've seen few of them and in sort of maps. Just let me think a bit and vape. Uh, I, I don't see what I can actually uh, recommend here because uh, it looks to me it's just some experiments or trying to explore some brushworks or uh, or some works on the compositions but uh, works on compositions can be done even simpler they don't require details we don't really need to read that is this trees or not trees it absolutely doesn't matter uh, uh, what i would if this kind of researchers uh, if it's just made as a study, then I would personally recommend to refuse the textured brushes and stay more like with these brushes, but even uh, remove opacity uh, option and uh, work with the solid values, that will be more helpful. Because if here we will remove all these uh, brush details, like this small texture of the brush, that's what's uh, the juice of it. That's what's priceless in this kind of researches. If you understand what I mean. The study of the values is in the values, not in the texture of the, of the brush. So just take a solid brush with no opacity and start to block out. For instance, even here, if you If you will, um, how to say, posterize it into what we have here on this stage, you will see that there is not too much variations and actually explorations with the values. All the values are almost the same and uh, yeah, that it can be done a bit more interesting, even if it was like maybe a reference was used or something like that. just want to remove all the texture information or at least as much as possible that's what's priceless when you learn uh, values for example but again I don't know if it was the points to to learn the Maybe actually it was a test of some texture brush, so <laughs> that would be another question. So 
So that's how you make the studies of values. You use just a solid brush. Again, it's in my understanding. I'm not saying that it's the only way and that's how it's done, but you don't need this texture information here. Even if it was an illustration like the, I don't know, the for some production or whatever, uh, it's not what you have to do on the first stages like this, uh, when you are sketching it, when you are blocking out things. You don't need this textures information at all. Textures comes later when you are refining something and things like this. At this point you don't need them. All these details, for instance, during the refining stage will be lost anyway, so I mean, just try to be more uh, how to say working like a posteri posterization filter I don't know how to say it how to describe it if you are an old fag and you know how the JPEG images work like how they can be opened uh, I think that would be the great explanation of what I'm trying to say. It's like there is a progressive and somehow called in different, I don't remember, the two algorithms which are opening the JPEGs images. One is opening it uh, stroke by stroke from the top to the bottom and another is opening it changing the mosaic feel like the resolution of it. So first it starts with few pixels. I mean even here if I will quickly but I think I'm saying such an obvious thing anyway you see if I'm going here like no nah, it's not too much yeah so some JPEG images they are opening in this way you just don't notice it but it's very quickly done and it's already here if you've seen it so I mean that's how the artwork should move <coughs> first it's something like this and then it's something like this, then it's something like this, then it's something like this, then it's something like this. So at least that's what I'm trying to do when I'm approaching some illustrations and usually it works for me very well and I'm defining the values at the very first stage and following I'm, I'm building my picture on top of this huge setup like on this solid setup which I made previously. Each step is just, it's like a base for another step. It's not that I'm having it absolutely organized like one step, the second step, the third step, absolutely no. It's, of course it's fluent, it's merging into each other, but I mean, if we separate it, if we posterize it like this, uh, then that would be the nice approach. And on this stage, on this very first stage which you can see right now on the screen like brush work absolutely not required it's it's not helping it's it's what it's helping with it's helping with hiding the problems the texture brushes are usually like the hiding the problems if if you for instance take again imagine i hope which you are with your artistic imagination you can do this just imagine you take some uh again like something painted on the canvas with the oil and you remove all the texture information you remove the information about the uh, the thickness of the brush or oh, sorry of the paint the texture of the canvas if you remove it and leave only the color itself you will see the very flat and probably even primitively pictured uh, primitively painted picture uh, what makes it juicy, what makes it uh, interesting looking is the texture usually. The thickness of paint and the texture of the canvas itself. And the texture of the underlaid uh, colors and things like this. Uh, so textures, I'm not saying the textures are bad, they're usually used in the final stages when you need to hide some problematic things or when you need to uh, uh, make this feel of the traditional painting or things like this usually for this or if you need something 
like if you need to blur something which doesn't deserve too much attention. Uh, on the first stages, it absolutely doesn't matter which brush you use, just, I mean, just keep in mind that textures, you don't need even to think about textures, it's absolutely useless and... Especially in studying, especially in studying, so yeah. Well, that would be my... I, I, I won't talk about the composition here or things like this, because first I, I didn't watch the movie, I think this is from Django uh, book, or how it's called book of the jungle jungle book uh, so uh i don't know like uh, is it really worth to talk about the composition mm, i don't know this is for instance the central one is very weak composition it's uh, could be way more interesting uh and uh the others one are more interesting this is the simple one but i'm not saying that it's bad it's just this one, the middle one, is a bit clumpy and uh, there could be more work done to, you know, to to make it look more interesting. Again, just discarding all this information about the opacity of the strokes and things like this, just look big volumes. You can start to see some... interesting things which might be implemented to to make it true look better Yeah, so uh, I think you, it was clear what I meant. So just blocking out and uh, all the textures comes after. Okay, so let's see a few more sketches also from Jimmy. Landscapes, uh, nice colors on the bottom one, I mean it's a bit looks to me that uh, there was some colors taken from some references. I'm, I'm not saying that they were taken directly, but anyway it looks very realistic and nice and uh, all this, uh, the same like with the uh, oil uh, painting, like a very nice uh, uh, how to say, uh, color collection, I would say, color palette. It's like very groundy, uh, uh, not very saturated colors, and there are a lot of them, and uh, they're organized well together, and it's really nice. Uh, I don't know if the composition is really need to be discussed here. I mean, it's a landscape, and it works well with the classic... Uh, vanishing points and classic uh, perspective, classic sunset and things like this. 
this one uh, a bit more clumsy again like the one with the waterfall if it was a waterfall on the the one which i overpainted previously uh so yeah it's a bit unclear what's going on here we only see that there is some probably a castle and uh, the seaside and some rocks or oh, maybe it's some dragon laying down here very huge one i don't know some sphinx looking dragon uh so yeah this if we again trans transfer it into the simple composition which doesn't tell us anything about the uh, the is it a castle is it a node is it a dragon is it a rock if we just put it into very small comp uh, small primitive composition I'm, so I'm starting to be uh, tired a bit so sorry for this without this brushwork without these details on this stage we will be able to understand is our composition works well again depending on which goals we have or does it require more work attention and thinking do we need more experiment with this so when you do this work for instance and you are confused uh, do, do some artwork and you are confused about your composition it's good to just have a layer you can always make a separate layer and block out things like this and see where the problem uh, comes from sometimes it's not clear sometimes it's more clear so yeah so that's how would the thumb look like we don't see any specific things here but we can read the general composition and to be honest i can even see that there are some constructions here and no need to precise it with the spikes or something anyway on this stage and what's useful about this that you can change on this stage of thumbnail you can change a lot of things you can just with lasso tool with selections you can move things around without any worries because you didn't put too much efforts in it so far you didn't put too much details which you are trying to keep all the time because you already spent so much time on them so you don't worry about things like this and you can just move things around it's a nice composition by the way yeah uh, appears to be uh, especially if it's vertical maybe it could be some castle or interesting uh, anyway yes you can move things around it's, it saves your time and you get in return a lot of experiments with the same idea and uh, then you can either choose or either come up eventually to some a result which will satisfy you completely and then only you go to the next iterations right when you start to precise some details right now i'm drawing something from my mind i'm not saying that I, I don't know what it was supposed to be you start to draw some details which are already underlining the meaning and desired feel of the uh, the final picture once you're done with this iteration you go to another iteration and like like this over and over all the image over and over all the image never le uh, leave the one place uh, without any attention when you jump to another stage of working all over through all the canvas you need to go through these iterations anyway about this i i won't do anything about this it's it's not a bad render for a sketch it's a very quick uh, probably study i don't know and uh, i don't have any particular recommendations here rather than again i don't know if it was a photo study or not 
uh, to me there there is some problem with the uh, with the area of the nose and uh, here I'm sorry in English I'm very I'm very bad in English with the facial anatomy I don't know how to call the particular uh, skull parts so I will just draw like this uh, and it's mainly comes I think from the values from the um, I think it could be just fixed with uh, lightning the values here and be more specific with the thickness of this backlight it's really good that uh, again I don't know if it's a photo reference or not but it's good that uh, you paid attention uh, to the thickness of the backlight because some of the artists they usually do in a common mistake they draw the silhouette like this no, they have a silhouette and then when it comes to backlight they start to just draw one line on the one side of the you know the object it's not necessarily shall be face they are doing it and it's not a very good approach I mean it makes everything flat because what we are looking on is some flat thing which have some small facet on the side which actually reflects the light so it's it's really cool that uh, you paid attention to the thickness of backlight like the forehead is obviously the larger the wider volume so it will reflect more light it's this area of backlight will be wider here and the nose is thicker one but in this particular thing uh, example in this particular sketch I think it's too thick so you can like make it a bit larger here so it's not that thick the same with this one you just be sure here and so it's like basically if you have troubles with the backlight like this when you draw from imagination you can try to imagine the front uh, let me do it like this let's draw a very schematic head I will zoom in and you try to break it into the facet fa facets how it's pronounced I don't know like the very simple ones like you are looking on the very primitive blueprint of the head doesn't matter if it's correct proportions here or not I just want to explain the thing so you try to pick up the front facet and highlight it with some color something which is uh, like when the light is from the very uh, falls from the very front like uh, the front line my English is so perfect I can't even And then you can try to divide it because the face is uh, like here for instance it's not only uh, reflecting light differently in this direction right it's also in vertical direction like if the light goes from here the nose will reflect more light in this part and less light in this part right because they have different angles so i mean I, i'm pretty sure i'm like explaining something which everyone knows for ages so with this uh thing you try uh for example to 
to try to make this effect like which which part of the face will reflect some light which is not which is more which is less and then you can try to transform it and just to see the proportions just to see the proportions of how the how much light deserves nose in the backlight how much light deserves uh, forehead you can see it in proportions here so at least you can find the rough again again it will be rough but still uh, more precise look sorry just bright color yeah you need to compare this thickness here this thickness of the nose here and here so now you see that okay this part the if the f uh, forehead part is like this the nose is like this approximately again and this under nose part is very thin so i mean yeah you got my point like a map of the ratios i would say well yeah so that's the only thing i mean if i'm again starting to draw things like the ears or it will just take the time and uh, doesn't w won't make any sense okay and there was something else this one I, I don't know it's again the same thing like with the previous black and white so it's uh, i don't know for which purpose it was done it's just a nice thumbnail uh, again i would refuse the uh, on this stage the textured brushes uh, but not in this in this example it's not that obvious these texture brushes i don't know it's almost like the solid brush work it's i don't know i really don't know what to say i mean i don't know what was the study what was the purpose and uh, uh, maybe it's the first sketch to some personal artwork maybe it's just the study from the photo reference and uh, I don't know what I can advise here I don't know what I can change here uh, so yeah I hope it was useful somehow mostly it's about blocking out and uh, pay more attention to the values rather than the textures at the stage of creating thumbnails and first initial sketches I hope it was useful. Hope it was useful. Okay, it's just to draw your attention because I'm pretty sure someone is already sleeping. Okay, let's... I, I think that we got only... Mm. Uh, Jamie is uh, saying very useful. Thanks for the feedback. Much appreciated. Thank you for sending artworks. If if you will send next time, maybe try to pick up some personal artwork. I'm I'm not saying that these are not. I'm just saying that uh, something which uh, uh, you don't know how to move further or uh, you, you know. I mean, just or maybe make something because I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to run these streams very often and uh, so you can probably make some uh, try on the personal art uh, particularly uh, for the review stream you can put there items which you usually don't like to draw or you don't want how to draw them or you always confused with some particular lightning and things like this so you can sum up everything in one picture with very short brief just send me and uh, we will see you next time thank you and uh, I, I think that the last artist it's uh, Sof which was in the chat as well I'm just quickly trying to find the folder yes it's Sof she sent just one picture and here it is
Igor, thank you as well for sending the picture. Sorry for English language, but uh, <laughs> we will try. If there will be more requests in Russian language, maybe we will run the separate uh, stream with the uh, only with Russian language. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to change the name. Sof. How to write? Just Sof will be enough or Sof P like this? I will leave it like this and wait. Maybe Sof will tell me how is how she prefers more. All right. Uh, so that's a lovely image. Uh, the only thing here. Again, I, I, I will try to start with the something what I like and I will vape a bit because I feel like I could vape a bit. Where is my electronic cigarette? Ah, yes, sorry. There was a note. Uh, I, I think that it's the... I didn't play uh, Dark Souls, but I think Soph was... Uh, making kind of a reference or the fan art of a character from Dark Souls. She mentioned it in the mail. Uh, the things which I like is the uh, color mood, the uh, the overall color mood, I would say. Uh, uh, it could be a bit more precise in the colors and less wash out moments like here, for instance, even though the effect of the coins and uh, gold, gold piles or whatever it is, some jewelry and things like this is looking good. But things like this, when uh, you overlay some color and uh, when you uh, make this uh, some particular, let's say, base color, I will paint here. I don't know if it's... And then you take the brush with opacity and uh, you put something on top of it like this it makes the color washed usually depending on the on which color you have on top what i'm doing in this uh usually when i'm doing oh sorry starting to forget how to talk uh what i'm usually doing not to get into muddy colors when it's not needed sometimes you need the muddy colors and here it's not very dramatic it's 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 just like some small spikes of some colors which can be avoided but in my again opinion but what i'm doing usually is that i'm keeping on both layers like i'm creating the i have one layer for the underneath and one layer for overlay and I can overlay with any color I want. I want. Let's make it a bit uh, less hard. I can, yeah, make the overlay any color I want, and then I can tune both of these layers. I can try to tune them usually with hue and uh, how it's called hue saturation uh, thing. I will turn on the desktop sharing here so you could see the window. Uh, hope it's visible so uh, now I can tune both of them because I know that they're gonna merge into some one particular color these uh, layers and even especially when I'm changing the opacity of the overlay I can see that it's like making the underneath color muddy and nothing else so in this case, I would like to keep them on the separate layers so I could tune them, right? So I could, for instance, tune and, and find the desired uh, it's just, I, I think I'm not that clear. So maybe I am, but I will just <coughs> desired color. Right? So when I'm changing either underneath layer uh, with hue saturation or color balance or the upper overlay layer, I can find the needed color. And plus I could, I could zoom out, I can see the whole picture and see how this color interacts with the rest of the picture. It's, it's just to avoid the muddy colors. 
while working. It, it sounds very complicated, but during the work process, it can become just a second nature. It's very quickly done. You create every overlay brush stroke you create on top, uh, on the top layer, on separate layer, and then you can always tune the underneath thing. You can place something in between of these layers and, and avoid the muddiness, avoid the muddy colors. Uh, just the very representative thing is when, for instance, people are using the white color as an overlay. Let's take some more uh, bright color here. Like this. And the overlay color will be white. People like to improve their values with the operating either white or, you know, Let's not make it white, so we can adjust the color later a bit. But, but, but like this, you know, this kind of uh, mix doesn't look very good, especially the gradient. Uh, well, gradient in this uh, particular thing is not that bad, but the color here is washed out, and uh, that's what white color do. It's just washing out, it's create no color at all. So it, uh, here, uh, when you have both the background and the overlay color on different layers, you can tune them separately and you can find the desired color in the middle, not just this washed one. Uh, also, what you can do, for instance, if you have this overlay problem, you don't want this washed color here, you can always uh, put the transparency on the top layer on overlay and try different colors. You want it more vivid, you pick up, you make it more vivid here in the color uh, picker and you can just manually paint it and voila you got the the more vivid color here on the blend then you blend these layers together voila and you got your you can proceed to the next step okay that's probably deserved uh, didn't deserve so much attention what i really wanted to uh precise here what i would improve is actually the vertical perspective because uh, on one of the streams, which I ran publicly, I already uh, had the example like this when there was too much of vertical perspective. And this, I guess, is the very good example of when you don't really have to pay so much attention to the vertical perspective. So we are all uh, thinking about three point uh, perspective here, right? And we want to in include this uh, vertical perspective to make the uh, more impression, like to make it more epic and, you know, like this kind of thing. But sometimes it's not an answer, sometimes it's not really needed. And you can experiment with this, actually. You can see how the things are working. And what I'm talking about uh, sometimes, usually it's completely... If you go and... Uh, yeah, and type for instance architectural perspective. You, I, I'm pretty sure some of you are uh, aware about the thing. It's that uh, in classic architectural sketches and blueprints, they are not using the third perspective at all. Doesn't matter from which point the uh, where the uh, the, the vanishing point is. So. Uh, uh, that's the example of like there is no third perspective. There is no vertical perspective at all Pictures like this without vertical distortion. They look greater in my opinion again These ones they look greater. They are more clear Rather than there was the third perspective included it would uh, lose the sense of this, you know, like uh, Usually we don't notice the third perspective in our real life for us, everything, our mind constructs everything into vertical. If we see that the building is standing vertically and you rise up your head and you watch into the skies where the building goes like a skyscraper, for instance, your mind is still considering it to be vertical, right? The same on the 2D picture, but it's different. Now your mind is doubting, like, is it falling or is it really going up and uh, is it still vertical? So it's a bit unbalanced here and what I would like to try here maybe is to 
try to avoid this third perspective and see what's uh, how it can look like without it. The first thing, by the way, I'm going to fix in my understanding again, a uh, thing which might be fixed, is that usually, uh, how to say in English, <laughs> Usually this is the, the center of the image, the center vertical thing is the center of the picture frame. Uh, how, to, uh, how to explain? If you, for instance, think even about the third perspective, all these uh, guides will go like this the point where they gather they will be on the central vertical the center of all your image later you can try to crop it like this the image for example and that would have a certain effect that this line is already not in the center that will have the certain effect in the image which actually happened to this one and what I'm talking about is that the central line, if we look closer, where all these lines, vertical lines can gather, they are somewhere here, I would say, somewhere here, not in the center. So now when all this uh, other perspective is built around this scheme, we can see that all the picture is kind of falling to the left side a bit falling to the left side let's try to fix it a bit uh, select all let's just rotate it like this sorry I will make the I won't touch the original layer. Yeah, so let's rotate it like this. Maybe it's too much, but we will see a bit later. Anyway, now this line will be right in the center. You see all this, all the vertical lines. I mean, all the third perspective goes somewhere to the point on this line and uh, I think now it's better because it's not falling to the left if we look it was like this now it looks like this don't know if it's visible or not but it was kind of a bit falling to the left side plus including the huge golden puddle here it's just even context is like uh, heavy and things so it was falling like this and now it's more improved and now I want to try to get rid of the of the third perspective uh, I will try to maybe do it with layers or maybe paint it I don't know what's better I will try with the with the layer So really just, uh, I know that a lot of artists, they like to uh, introduce the third perspective. Uh, it's it's not bad. Oh, damn it. It's always making the same thing with my lasso. Why it's, um, why it's like this? Oh, damn it. Uh, I forgot where I was. And what I really wanted to. Okay. I will use the eraser. I can't use this last so it doesn't work like it's like I want. Yeah, sometimes the artists they are exaggerating it too much. They are exaggerating the
exaggerating the third point perspective and uh, I mean the vertical perspective and it's not really something cool I mean with this perspective for instance which you have here right now imagine the other two points they will be too close to each other I mean the angle of view will be extremely uh, huge it's like when you look from the through the fish islands so the rest if you have such a vertical perspective here it means that it will affect all the image the horizontal perspective as well and in fact your image should look like more to taken from the fish islands with such a exaggerated third perspective vertical perspective sorry I'm using brush here because my lasso tool is broken. I don't know why it's it's making two clicks when I don't want it. And impossible to use. I'll approximately like this and I will quickly try to to change the background here. It's it's up to you. You can you, you can try to leave a bit of a ver there. There always will be vertical perspective. I'm not against it. I'm just saying not exaggerating it. Not uh, wait. It's not moving. Yeah. Again, I'm experimenting. I'm not saying that it's the answer ultimate answer I'm just trying things <clears throat> yeah so in my opinion it's better it's even gives more air more distance uh, it's even more epic uh, it's like if you imagine the theater scene with all these huge decorations and things. So it's not really necessary to always, not always, but uh, sometimes it's not necessary to introduce the third perspective at all. Third perspective is very good with the dynamic uh, looking uh, uh, concept art or illustrations when uh, you know, the good example, for instance, the recent Spider-Verse, all this concept art is actually based on the third point perspective, oh, sorry, on the vertical perspective, when you look either from the grounds to the skyscrapers to the sky, or from the top uh, of the roof uh, down there on the streets, it all goes there, it's all the uh, vertical perspective, it's cool, uh, you can't avoid it there, it will lose all the sense of the depth and uh, the height of the height of the uh, buildings so that's when it's necessary here in the illustrations like this uh, they are non-dynamic uh, you are not sitting somewhere on the top of these columns uh, so uh, I think you can avoid it uh, and not pay too much attention to it let's try to improve the seat here the throne as well yeah and uh, the second thing is already some uh, minor not very important things but still uh, they deserve some attention uh, it's actually a bit confusing things like this even if it's a decorative element like here on the chair for instance I'm talking about these directions here 
it's strange because we are looking from uh, from the bottom on them and uh, we are lower than them so depending on the perspective uh, I mean not depending on the perspective but uh, the perspective tells us that they are they, they, they should be absolutely opposite like this even if it was the uh, like even if you wanted them to be like this uh, it's a bad decision here as an artist even if you are drawing some uh, think something from the reference if you are drawing some historical thing and if we look on this chair for instance from the side and it's really got the elements like this like there is some metal element let's say which have these elements like this right it's either needed to be constructed so well and so believable or either be transformed into this so you don't have to suffer too much if I'm, if I'm clear here so currently here it looks a bit out of perspective the same thing with here like the elements on the armor let's try to fix it quickly if we can not very accurate but it's, it's making the sense I guess so the same with the spheres and everywhere <coughs> like especially the armor I mean it's uh, from the point of view of perspective it's very simple you all, all the joints all the like the even the hands you can represent them as a sphere and depends where you look from the sphere if you look from the side it will look like this right if you look from the top we see this part more the top part so it will be somewhere here and we start to see things like this you see how penning likes and 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 can draw the spheres perfect perfect spheres <laughs> again if we look from the bottom it will be the opposite it will be like this and that's what you need to keep in mind all the time if you by the way have even some small construction and very simple one in uh, perspective Oops, sorry there is a call I will pick it later you gotta think like this depending on the perspective which you have I'm, I'm, I'm doing it sketchy right now here so I don't know where the points will be but I presume that the horizon, horizon line will be somewhere here so yeah you need to keep them in mind this probably won't be like this it will be more le less going towards each other but anyway it's it's not the point the point is to always keep in mind uh, this particular perspective set on the top it will be a bit more opened to the viewer right so you always keep in mind where you are so here with this for instance if you imagine again this piece of armor like the knee armor as a sphere you know because you have this scheme here that you are looking from the bottom and that's why you add the things like this here 
you know it and then you will think about this fear like yes this is the sphere on which i'm looking from the bottom so probably some of the parts of this thing will go in this direction even if it's not true even if it's not true it's better because again as i told in the beginning of the stream you are the creator and you are the magician who creates the illusion and if it's better to convince the viewer that the perspective is like this, do it and don't have doubt. But again, of course, the perfect way would be to make a very, very good study to set up all the perspective possible, uh, to set up the perspective mesh everywhere and uh, uh, use all the measurement precisely that would be the perfect, the ideal workflow, of course. And the same here, you, you always think about this, that it's going like this. Because you are looking from down there on this sphere. So probably it will be something like this. Well, it's, it's more or less correct here, anyway. Well, I hope it was uh, clear. Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is that... Just a second, I will try to... Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention is that, for instance, the head, it's absolutely alright. With the crown, which is again a bit out of the perspective, uh, but we will go through it. Uh, for the head, I've noticed there is a very nice reference, in fact, within this perspective. Uh, it's actually this part of the chair. I mean, this part of the chair is more or less... Uh, right uh, l looking right i mean it's absolutely belongs to the space it's uh, tends to belong to the space and looks very convincing and uh, organic well the head is a bit like going to the left on on, on i mean to his left uh, shoulder uh, like he's falling asleep to the left side and uh, it, it's absolutely might be the trick it might uh, might be the intention it might be the posing thing but if the uh, idea was to create him, uh, his uh, head uh, looking straight, I mean, not looking straight, but uh, not leaning on one side or another, it's actually the same principle like here. Imagine the same thing, the same concept, the same basic. You can easily, for instance, uh, draw the basic uh, sorry it needs to follow the perspective the basic face here i mean you can precise the facial uh, plane here that will be like this and you almost got the head right you got the nose there will be eyes somewhere for example i'm i'm i'm, I'm drawing very 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 I, I drew putin i guess anyway uh, you got the point so actually you got a good reference here and it belongs to the perspective so you can transmit the same principle here as well if you were able to figure out how it should look like this part of the chair you absolutely can do the same with the head the head is nothing else but the geometrical object as well it's just a bit more complicated than the chair right uh, but you can start again as we discussed previously from the simple shapes from the simple things and then probably try to put the crown here like imagine you're, you're putting crown somewhere here let's first create the since it's like if we cut this top part it will be rectangular right so let's start with imagining that we will put the crown that we will cut this thing like this and the color is not right 
we are cutting it like this following all the lines are following the perspective and the invisible lines which we can see from here we are drawing them as well we're constructing them so the cut would be like this and now we can see that okay that's that will be the base of our crown imaginary crown right so we can find the perspective and we can find which part of the crown we will see and which not right if i'm clear here so I, I just wanted to precise that this part of the chair is actually pretty much convincing and it's a good example of how you can approach the same to the anatomy like the basic shapes it's just a cylinder nothing else the cylinder in the perspective you can absolutely use the same technique on the early stages to define the posing and to place the pose into the to place the character into perspective more organic so yeah, I don't want to redraw it because again, as I'm saying, it might be the posture, he might be leaning on the left, so why not? Uh, it's absolutely okay. It's just a small mention of things. So uh, that would be mostly it. The other thing is the final thing. It's the, uh, the values again and things like this, but again, it comes to the a bit of too much muddy colors. I would say the colors which are not identified, the colors which didn't, which are not uh, uh, precise, the uh, which are unintentionally done, and there are a variety of them. They are almost all the same, like some brown, green, uh, dirty brown, green. Uh, it's not bad to have muddy colors. It's just uh, it's it's usually better when it's done intentionally. After all, you can really, again, block out these things to make it look at least intentional. When you got this mess, you pick up the key colors and you start to block out. You define like here on the foreground, it will be more grayish, more like this. Small gradient to the back and on the back it will be more like reddish or yellowish warm light and on the very back it will be let's say the third color maybe it's too late even more yeah like this again simplifying and make it intentional now you got okay now i got you see the colors themselves they don't look muddy they just unsaturated colors every color is absolutely all right every color is legit so it's not dirty what makes it dirty is this mess the mess of them they are blending into each other randomly they are uh, uh, I, I, I hope you understand what I mean uh, all this uh, uh, unintentional stroking and uh, it makes uh, the muddy feeling there is another point that uh, uh, sorry I was reading the comments uh, there is another point if you need to make this muddy feeling like if you are drawing swamp or maybe it was an intention to make like some dirty money or whatever I'm not again against it again I'm just uh, um, looking into options which i would uh, probably try if i was working on this piece so yeah i hope that's clear with the muddy colors colors themselves they are not muddy what makes color muddy is the mess between them the blending between them uh yeah which what also makes even the solid colors muddy is the contrast if you have some uh just will draw quickly here if you have uh some unsaturated color like this and you place a very bright i don't know like this color so of course it will make the beneath color uh, a bit like grayish uh, darkened but 
not that muddy, but I just don't know how to explain it in English, but uh, I, I hope my point is clear. What makes color muddy is the mix between them, is the, how you arrange them together. Uh, once you have the clear strokes, the very brave strokes, and you can experiment with this as well. Uh, try not to blend them together randomly, keep them structural and uh, I don't know how to explain it. I hope it's clear. Yeah, just try to avoid random blending, random uh, uh, yeah, random blending and try it when you, when you work with the colors like this, you, again, as I said in the beginning, try to keep them on different layers so you can tune the blending between them. So you can always, like, quickly said, if you want this top light color to interact somehow, even with some opacity included with the bottom color, it absolutely doesn't, it's not necessary to keep these colors like they are. You can always change, like, like you see, for instance, that this color here, when you blend it, when you introduce some opacity, is not really what you want to 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 have here. So you can always, since you got it on the separate layer, you always can isolate it, the transparency of the pixels, and you can come up with some other color, desired color and try to blend it to, to get the desired result right here in this spot. You can also, as I said, to go to, I don't know, hue saturation or color balance and tune this layer here to see, to, to find the desired color here when the, where the opacity is. Anyway, yeah. So that would be the main things in this image, as I said in the beginning, by the values, uh, I think it makes the work. Uh, maybe it's a bit too muddy at the bottom concerning the uh, values, maybe trying to make this bluish or cyan color, I don't know how it's correctly done, J just to pop up a bit, just a bit in some particular areas, just to make it a bit brighter so it will be nice looking place and not nice looking place but uh, I mean the I will catch this information easier and uh, in general there are a lot of colors they are all good uh, in my understanding the mood is readable and uh, I think that's a good piece if only we uh, don't pay that much attention to the third point perspective, to the vertical perspective. Let's me merge the layers and see what we got. Yeah, not, not, not too much changed, but I mean, it's just like, I think this is a bit better. Regarding the composition, of course, I would personally add more space to the bottom. So these guys are not standing right on the edge. But maybe it happened, ah yes, it happened where, because I turned it a bit. Let's do it then, quickly. Canvas. Let's make it like this. <coughs> No, it's almost like Instagram ratio, almost square. Yeah, and just want to make a sense of something continuous here, like stairs or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I would do something like this to add more space here, maybe even why not some reflections from what's going on on the top yeah uh that's that would be it 
and uh, then in the end you can even decide to like uh, me personally I don't see a big problem with this uh, it might be the some particular solution in the composition uh, but here I don't think that there need to be so much space here and there on the sides and therefore we can try to I don't know to crop it or at least just to see what how it can look like oh yeah I think there is more air on the background and yeah I would like end up with something like this on the stages of the sketches of the first sketches and then just move on and yeah nice piece anyway sorry I didn't play the game Dark Souls so <laughs> Don't know who is this character. <sighs> okay, so that would be the last artwork for today. And we streamed... I, I don't remember how much. One, two, three... Three and a half of hours. Three and a half hours. Uh -huh. So thanks to everyone who was watching the stream who was here uh, the guys who sent their works you are all doing right please don't again accept it as a how it shall be it's just my suggestions it's absolutely subjective uh, you absolutely don't have to do anything with this information but uh, it, it's uh, i would be glad if it might be really helpful somehow why not uh, so again thanks to all of you and uh, let's again meet next time uh, i will notify in advance and uh, so you could uh, if you want you can send me your artworks and then i will gather them all and prepare another art review i will try to be more um uh, i suppose um uh, a bit more concentrated not on what I'm talking and trying to explain but maybe on uh, uh, drawing uh, and uh, not trying to refine the work but rather step back and see which mistakes uh, in my opinion was done during the process so it's not that I'm trying to make uh, again the uh, to refine your artwork to make it look better i'm trying to look into structure of your work trying to understand how it was developing and uh step back if there if i can see some mistakes i would like to step back and very roughly precise uh, where i think the mistake was making and how it f fixing or avoiding this thing can improve the final re result so again, sorry if the overpaints look clumsy. My point is to explain, not to make the uh, your art look better. Uh, so, <laughs> thanks guys. And uh, meet you soon again. Thanks for coming. Uh, stay safe. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.